Today is the day that we've been waiting for all year. The scene across the countryside is turning day by day. A lot of combines gonna be running this week. I would say the only person more antsy at this point than me is my dad. I show up uncharacteristically early and he's still 10 steps ahead of me. Just a little bit. Whoa, way too much. That's more than a little bit. I know that most of you here probably don't have the privilege of getting to experience harvest season with your family as your coworkers. And needless to say, it has not gotten any less interesting in the 15 years I've been doing it. The oil's already been checked here in the 780 combine. We're gonna back this out and get some sunshine on her. While this combine warms up a little bit, I just wanna comment that I appreciate all of you here watching the video. The channel is extremely close to 30,000 subscribers, and it would mean the world to me if we could get to that number this fall. So if you're feeling extra generous today, smash that subscribe button, and while you're there, like the video as well. Thank you all for your support. Okay, the main combine's outside and out of the way. Let's look at the 670. Doesn't matter what piece of equipment, everything gets an oil check every morning. Plenty of oil. There's quite a bit of a difference in engine specs on the S670 versus the 780. This is a smaller 9 liter engine, so much less horsepower. And the other 780 is running a 13 and a half liter. So it's got quite a bit more horsepower and a lot more harvesting capacity because of it. Hey, 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 pretty lady. Ready to break that thing out. But we do have to be patient because we don't even know whether or not these soybeans are going to cut today. We just have a good feel. There's no doubt in my mind that falls here. We may not have harvested any crops yet, but everything's getting pretty brown. 50 degrees outside right now. It's that time of year and I love it. I'm curious, what's your favorite time of the year? Let me know in the comments and give me a reason why. I'm a fall guy, just because I like harvesting our crops and seeing the successes and failures of what we did this growing season. That is the bean field in question right there. They look like they've got. We've been eyeing these beans down for probably a week straight. They never quite hit the finish line. Oh wow, those are pretty dry already. Yeah, 15 to 16, but it is eight o'clock in the morning still. Usually aren't ready to cut this early anyways. completely shocked that it got that in the first try that was surprising yeah it's because we started on a monday not a sunday yeah. if we started on a sunday it would have taken them 10 tries ready to go go easy go easy on what putting that in there the first time what thing the first time that Six-way connector. It's already been in five times. Well, you forgot about that. Before we get too far into battle, we do have to assemble the troops. We have yet to determine what exactly we're gonna do with these beans. We're either gonna put them in our bin here at home, or we're gonna take them to a local commercial elevator. The second option is really dependent on whether or not the local elevator wants to push their cash bid a little bit. They are trying to load a train, and there's not a lot of beans coming in, so we're gonna try and use that for some negotiating leverage. If they're not gonna be very friendly, we're probably just gonna put them in our own bin. So we're gonna go ahead and get our rocker hooked up. That 
north 36 footer is traditionally our main bend. Because we have to load to the south to be on the rock, we're going to grab the auger that currently has the swing away prepared for the south, which is that one there on the left. We got all this way and forgot that we don't have the hammer strap on the 7800, so we got to go back. Finalizing this tractor was not my job. I would have thought that when the boss switched over the PTO to the correct RPMs for the augers, that he would have put the hammer strap back on, but that was not the case. My mistake for assuming. You know what they say about assuming, though. I just left Chris, didn't even tell him what I was doing. He's probably so confused right now. Back to the other barn. That's what I need, but I got some obstructions. Nothing like oily nuts to start the day. Why do we have this on and off? We brought the vertical till home. Oh, yeah. We took it off. That's probably. Put the mower back on? Yeah, I thought that. Maybe that would have been a part of your conversion process, but you know, what conversion? When you switch the PTO. I actually forgot it. it happens. Constantly. <laughs> huh. Round two. Good job, Chris. We got it. I would not recommend straddling a PTO with the tractor on. For those of you at home, this is a tractor off operation. Comes combine number two out of storage. Won't be long, we're gonna have the whole fleet out the field. I don't know about you guys, but we got both combines out. We've got both heads at the field. It's only right that we get the grain cart out. My baby. Plenty of oil. We'll do one last walk around just to make sure I haven't left any tools or anything of value on the grain cart or in its path. The sump trap door is still open. That'd be a bad one to find out out in the field. Looks like we're ready to roll. Ladies and gentlemen, let's ride. That right there, folks is a beautiful rig. Except for in typical John Deere fashion, it's low on hydraulic oil, so I'm gonna top it off real quick. This is a used tractor, so it's new to us, but not new. So it could have been low and we got it, we just didn't notice it. Fortunately for us, we have a nice two and a half gallon jug, John Deere High Guard transmission and hydraulic oil, because our brand new S780 also came low on hydraulic oil, to a degree of four to five gallons, which is pretty incredible. And that was a brand new machine. It happens. Well, shoot, it's above low now. I wonder if I just didn't let the tractor get warm enough. We'll put this in the cab just in case. We'll pretend that that didn't happen. I was just about to take off in glorious style and then I realized this thing doesn't have any diesel fuel. Or very little at least. Backing up the gravy train. Grain carting for soybeans does not use that much fuel. The principle is still there though. Always leave the farm with a full fuel tank because you never know where you're going next. As the hydrocarbons go in, so do the purifying juices. And it seems a little too many of those juices because it is now everywhere. Nature at its finest. I could get used to this. 
And hopefully I will, because I'll be in this tractor for a lot of hours this fall. Is everyone else watching this video just super ultra mega excited to go harvest some crops? Because I am like bubbling with excitement and joy. I know that my face just gives it all away. I'm such a cheery person. But in all reality, it's fun this time of year for us. Especially because we have a decent crop coming on. I know some of you probably didn't have a good growing season, so I'm not trying to rub that in your face. On our farm, everything's gone relatively smoothly this growing season. I'm sorry if the winds of fate did not blow the correct direction for you this year, but there's always next year for those of you who weren't as successful. By no means is the quality of our crop really our own doing. The powers to be the person in control of this world he calls all the shots here. You know, if it rains, if it doesn't rain, if the wind blows too much, if it hails, all of those things, they're out of our control. We do the best to play our hand to the highest degree possible for our operation. At the end of the day, though, we are not the make or break of what happens out in these fields. Hello. Get in there, you rascal. We ride at dawn! Actually, 9 o'clock. We ride at 9 o'clock a.m. That's where we're headed, to the field. Oh my gosh, this has got automatically canceling turn lights. This feels weird going down the road. Not used to this tractor or the tracks on the great car. Fortunately for everyone here, there's two things I'm good at. Being late and being parked in the way. I'm about to do both of them. You gonna try them or? Stop for a little bit. Gotta do some tech guys things in the S670. This is Katie's combine. She'll be the one operating this. We just wanna make sure we get the track spacing on the monitor correct. That way the head is cutting the appropriate width as it goes through the field. Make sure it's set up right. Nope, set to corn. That would have messed up my yield maps. It's good to stay on top of these things. Set it to soybeans. Perfect. See, it pulled up our variety from planting. Looks like we're pretty much ready to go. Never gonna know unless you try them. No time like the present. Zero threshing speed to take. Probably disengaged. I think the rotor was. stems. yield scales in the grain tank so it's hard to really put any merit in what the yield monitor is saying at least for another couple of brews or maybe even a couple of hoppers. It's a lot of green stems give combines trouble. Pressure. Right about what, 1100? Yeah, 12. 
780's pretty much wrapped up and ready to roll. Katie's been called. She's going to come around the 670. I'm going to make sure the settings are all right. Cut around real quick. I'll turn on that Midland radio. Mobile Green, now you might want to go to the west side of this piece. 10-4. All right, let's light this candle. Don't know how I can have an average moisture. We literally have not cut anything. beans. My time in this combine short-lived because Katie's here to take over. Everything's set up and ready to run though. Quality's not the greatest. We'll get that figured out. The elevator? Okay. So we're just gonna wait. That's new S780 showed them being relatively dry, 14 to 15%, yielding okay 70 to 80. Katie's combine shows them at like 16 to 17%, yielding like 55 to 60. The moisture only matters just for getting them cut and not getting docked too much at the elevator, making sure the crop's mature. But the yield is what concerns me. If this combine's right, that's going to be a very disappointing yield for this field. We're going to pull a hand sample from the grain tank, take it down south to the elevator where we're planning on hauling this, run that sample through their machine, and get a more accurate idea of what it's going to test through their probe. Beep beep, Katie. Trying to come through. Hopefully she knows where the tile holes are. That's going to be a rough ride. It appears to me that I cannot pull the auto steer line off the combine if it is a quick line or like a very instantaneously set line in the system that's not remembered after the field's finished. But if you actually create a line, like track one is what I just created on Katie's combine, I can pull that line and use it. Well, now what do we do while we wait? on our sample to come back. Twiddle her thumbs. Never mind, I figured something out. I'm gonna test and make sure that my hydraulics are all plugged in the direction that I want them to. So when I push the switch, I want it to go the appropriate way in or out. And on the opposite, when I pull the switch, I want it to come in. I'm very particular about how I want these lined up. Using three switches for the grain cart. One is our gate that controls the flow of the grain. Two is the spout direction, so up and down for the spout. Three is unfolding and folding the auger. You can see in the top right by the auger, that's what we want. That's the right direction. Two, out. Okay, two is the wrong direction. We have to flip two. Three, three is also the wrong direction. And two and three need flipped. done. These J&M stabilizer tracks are supposed to be one of the lowest daily maintenance tracks on the market. You can see we've got a sight glass 
oil bath hubs on all of these idlers. I don't even know the correct terminology. And all these little roller wheels. Normally you'd have to grease them all the time. Verify that we did this correctly. Out. Yep, that's right. That's right as well. And back to doing nothing. Now here is the most important part. The tractor cap. You guessed it. The entertainment. Last fall we finished Desperate Housewives. This spring we finished Grey's Anatomy. I think we're going to work on the Real Housewives of Orange County this fall. Highly educational content in this cab. There's what was harvested so far by the 780 Combine. Really not too bad of a sample. A few green pods in there, but that's unavoidable if they're not mature. You're better off having them in the tank than throwing them out the back. Ironically, Katie just texted me. Her and dad are coming back from sampling those beans they took out of that combine. 12.8, 12.8% moisture, which is actually drier than we'd like to start. 13% is where everything's standardized to. If your beans get drier than that, you're technically losing money because you're not using your allocated moisture content, that free weight you get from water. Now, if you're heavier than that, you do get docked and shrank down to 13%, but there is kind of a give or take there usually about 14 to 14 and a half percent is where you're going to start if you're hauling them to your local elevator. It's actually one of the larger differences between hauling to commercial stores versus putting them in your own bin. You can put 15 to 16 percent beans in your bin. By the time you cut throughout the day, the dry ones at the end of the day kind of get down to 12, maybe 11 percent. Blow the fan on them. They're all mixed in that bin. The moisture averages out to that 13, 13 and a half range. If you're taking them to the elevator, it's a little bit different just for the simple fact that you take them too wet, you get docked a lot of unnecessary bushels at those high moistures. And on the other side of the coin, you don't get compensated for over dry bushels. There's no give or take there. They typically do not average moisture on beans, although I think they should, but they don't. So probably going to start cutting these, take them to the elevator, chew through them as fast as possible. What's the plan? Then I cut the well and haul to the elevator. Dump these beans. Let her eat. Oh man, I'm getting put right into the ringer. Everyone wish me luck. Check out that camera action. Everything's going to plan so far. Although I don't know what speed he's trying to run. I'd say three to four if I guess. We are back in action. Harvest 2000 and 22. First field of soybeans, both combines rolling hard. We're getting after it. Just like riding a bike. First loaded truck of the year. Harvest season is on. that this tractor drives completely different than anything I'm used to. Rides smoother because of the ILS. Clutch feels a little softer. Brakes are a little softer as well. Not that they're not both aggressive. They just don't have much tactile response to them. They're just fluffy. Other than the operators getting comfortable back in the machines, combines are run smooth as well. That's a good report for the first few hours of harvest. Only took one load and I'm already used to this. You know, in honor of the first day of harvest, we got to break out the old drone, especially on the home field turf. This is one of my favorite farms we've got.
fibers are working out exactly as anticipated. For the most part, I can see the auger at any point in the cart. There is a little bit of a blind spot in the middle, but that's no big deal. Just want to make sure they don't go off the front or the back. A good cart driver always tarps the semi if they're not in a hurry. dry these beans even quicker, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Like I said, they were already at the point where we're going to be losing some money on water weight, but you got to cut them when they're ready. Another thing that I try my best to do is to follow the same tram line into the field. Now, it's impossible to pick one spot in the field and just travel there the entire time you're harvesting. As we move across the landscape, though, I try to bulk up as much of my transport paths into one spot. So when I'm trailering back and forth, either to catch a combine or go dump, I will stay in the same lane. Obviously, there's nothing I can do if I'm catching the combine. I got to go to where the combine is, but I do try to find my way back home to one of my travel paths. I think that that helps alleviate the impact of the weight on the ground. That shouldn't be as much of an issue this year, though, with these nice tracks on this JNM cart. Much to my surprise, we've managed to catch the trucks, which is pretty impressive because we're about the only people hauling beans this elevator, and it's not one through on this field from one end to another is almost three quarters of a mile so that does add a lot to our average harvesting efficiency we're not turning very much we're spending a lot of time in crop so we're accumulating bushels in the combines at a very fast rate so we are challenging our logistical system chris and jeff are also our only drivers right now so katie's going to run me up home i'm going to grab the fourth truck the third semi we're going to park it here kind of give us a little bit more overflow and if we catch that one well I'll be happy because that's impressive. Dad just radioed that he saw Chris coming up from the south with a 10 wheeler, so I'm going to load him. And then Katie and I are going to go get the extra truck. Never mind, the equipment service truck went up the road. Dad's eyes aren't exactly the keenest in the world. We're off to get the other truck. Katie's driving, she's more of a speed demon than I am. All reliable. I believe the oil's been checked. works out you go to get a truck because the other trucks aren't here by the time you do all that all the other trucks are here just sitting waiting on you play a little game of catch up now you can keep cutting that i'm gonna be under here in a second shout out midland radios best in the business if you're in the market for a radio they've got some great fall specials going on go check them out You guys want to talk about a dangerous game to play. This Diet Dr. Pepper has been sitting in this cup holder for two hours bouncing around. That's my lunch. I'm gonna open it up. Please don't explode. Oh, 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 oh. That was almost a disaster. Oh, oh, close call. You stay there until you calm down a little bit. Don't let anyone fool you, ladies and gentlemen. Farming is a dangerous business. Already need to go dump again. Go from caught up to behind and got up again back and forth that's what 10 bushels a second looks like if anyone was curious grain carts regardless of their brand are designed to move a lot of grain out very quickly and they're equally good at creating large messes very quickly coincidence i don't think so though if the same people who made grain carts also made shovels i could see a pretty good conspiracy theory there just not the case beans 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 all done I've been keeping track of our weight, so that load right there was 50,860 pounds. Go down here to our high-tech iPad, 
type that in onto our Google Sheet. Boom. That's how much we brought off so far. I sure wish there was a company that made a product that expedited this process, didn't require so much manual entry. Be neat to get one installed on our grain cart this week if they made it. Here's a lesson in grain cart 101 for you. We got a full combine over there, or relatively full. We've got a not very full combine here with the auger. Intuition would tell you to go to the full combine first. That's not the case. The most important thing to realize is which one is the boss's combine, and it's that one. He does have a reason for wanting to unload. He's laying off the land here, taking some more inroads off to the west, so that's why he wants to dump off, be completely empty, to make sure he can cut around the outside of the field without issue. And Katie, nah, she can wait. It's your first day on the job, guys. I wouldn't expect you to have this mastered yet. Just take notes. They will be a test at the end of the video. More beans. Now he's got a completely empty grain tank, plenty of room to go do whatever he wants to do for a while. I don't have to catch him. I should be able to catch you, Katie, when you turn back around on that short row and head north. Change of plans. I was gonna drive all the way to the other end and then back here. I was like, why would I do that when I can just have her cut me a little passage? We're not gonna make mention of it, but I don't know if you guys saw in the drone footage, Katie had a little bit of beans on the cab. Starting off the year right, cab beans, just a couple hours in. If she's a little too aggressive with that hydrostat, there's gonna be more. There we go. Disaster averted. I guess since it's the beginning of harvest and this is usually a pretty popular video, I should inform those of you who are new here about the employment here on our farm. That combine right there is operated by my sister, Katie. My dad's in the bigger combine, Marty. And my two uncles, Chris and Jeff, are running the trucks right now. Just the five of us. I guess I shouldn't forget to mention myself. I'm Andy. I'm in the green car most of the time, although I'm a jack of all trades. I run the combines if I need to. I do run the trucks some, but usually Chris and Jeff handle that on their own. Cutting beans, first day. It's going good so far. It always excites me to see new viewers down in the comment section below, so drop a comment, leave some feedback, tell me what you think of the video. I greatly appreciate all of you for viewing, commenting, liking the video. It's awesome, helps me out a bunch. The cameras were a great choice. Anyone debating whether or not they want to add multiple camera systems to their green cart, this is your sign to go ahead and do it. Quick biography, I'm a sixth generation row crop farmer here from Mattoon, Illinois. We're about 45 miles south of Champaign on Interstate 57, 25 miles north of Effingham on Interstate 57. I farm full time with all of the aforementioned members of our team here, all family. Very grateful to be able to do it with our own blood. There's times where we definitely need some extra help, but we typically get by without it. My dad, Marty, in that combine right there is who I would consider the boss of the operation. I would self-classify myself as the joker of the operation. I gotta keep everyone balanced out here in Harvest, especially the boss, because he gets a little uh, feisty when we have a lot of equipment rolling in the fields, the stress of all that. I'm from a different generation. I seem to do well regardless of the conditions we are in. You can get a little bit snippy. I try to keep everyone balanced. Although my sister Katie isn't here year round, she's a very valued operator for us. She's been running a combine for probably a decade at this point. She runs a tillage tractor in the spring. I do have to keep a close eye on her though. She is the most likely to plug her draper and definitely the most likely to snap a corn head snap. And me, I'm just perfect, you know? I, I would never make a mistake. Shovel on the grain cart, not for me. I won't need it. Heck, I'd be surprised if I dropped a single speck of grain on the ground this year. 100% joking. If anyone's gonna mess something up here, it is probably me. We've made quite a bit of progress on this field already. This entire field's 220 acres, and I'd say we're getting close to halfway done. What's your combine showing for moisture on these beans? 11.7. Well, whose idea that sticker was? It's, it's obnoxious. Dad literally just backed Katie out of the way. Put a lot of faith in her paying attention. He wanted to dump first. I don't know if I ever gave you all the definitive answer. These beans are going to the elevator, which is nice because we're gonna have a lot of beans and we don't have enough bin space for them all. So being able to offload some of them to the commercial storage or for commercial sale immediately gives us a lot more flexibility as the harvest season goes on. I'm sure many of you have played Farming Simulator where you'll get a notice 
oh, a train's coming to town, or we've got a shortage of this grain, so they're going to give you a premium. Well, that's very similar to what goes on in farm country. If there's something a little more pressing, like loading a train and not having enough beans, an elevator may be willing to push their bid a tiny bit to secure those beans. I'm not saying they're going to give you a great deal, like Farming Simulator might allude to. There is margin to be captured, though, by timing the market right. Not that we're experts, we just happen to have beans ready, and an elevator has a train they need to load, and they don't have enough in their storage. But Farming Simulator, that's blasphemy around here. If you want a great farming game, you need to check out American Farming by Grant Hilbert, also known as The Squad on YouTube. He is a Farming Simulator YouTube, has created his own game from scratch with the help of some other graphic designers, gaming designers, and from what I've seen, it's gonna be awesome. So make sure you go check that out. He's got some great content on his personal YouTube channel, Grant Hilbert, and then on The Squad, where he does Farming Simulator stuff. It's definitely something to watch if you're into Farming Simulator games. Katie's just anointing everyone with her unloading all her beans as she drives by. Very gracious. My generosity knows no bounds. I've got another one of Jeff's loaded trucks. Because I'm just a great nephew. This big field we're cutting to the north are Asgrow 35 XF1 Extend Flex soybeans planted the 23rd of April, which was early for this season. Most seasons we'd like to get started before that, but Mother Nature did not allow that. Across the road, we have some Pioneer 35 T15 Enlist soybeans planted two to three weeks later. And as a matter of fact, they actually look pretty close to being able to harvest. Take that back, they're still way too wet. Yeah, I don't know actually. Try one more. Looking for some crunch. A little tiny bit of softness, but a lot of crunch. Kind of like a Heath bar. That's the perfect moisture. And yes, I just completely made that up. I don't know if that's a good physical sensation to base it on or not. Peanuts. Planters peanuts. That's what you need. There you go. Oh, nope. I thought of it. Cashews. That's what you're looking for. You want it to feel kind of like a cashew. Yeah, I hate nuts though, so terrible example. My fun little party trick is that I can be nosy and peep on the display in the combines and see what kind of data we're getting thrown at right now. For the entirety of this field, he's showing an 81 bushel average so far. Instant is running 81.6 and instant moisture is 10.7, which is kind of dry. I have to stop what we're doing for a second so Dad doesn't accidentally drive off the side of the ditch. The mind games of dealing with a combine operator who is also your father. I'll finish peeping on the S780 after I zip over here and catch the other combine. It's a little rough across here. Yeah, we're like a well-oiled machine that breaks down every couple hours. Back to what I was talking about, Dad's combine over there. Here's what his monitor is currently showing. 81 for the field, average dry. Instantly, he's running 70 to 80, I'd say. Moisture 10 to 11%. I can see his combine settings, and I can actually go in on the Operation Center app and send different settings to his combine. He does have to approve them, but when he does approve them, it can take over on his combine. So I could say, hey, I want you to change your rotor to 600, threshing clearance to 10. And then it'll buzz him, and I send him that, all I gotta do is hit accept, and it'll take it. Now this is just a remote access on my iPad here through the operations center. Uh, the one thing you can't see is the cameras. Anything that comes up that's pink like this, typically is a camera on his combine that won't let me see through video. That was one combine. Now Katie's combine has a Gen 4 display installed externally, not built in. And we can also do a remote display access on that. I won't get as much data off of it. Her yield is a little bit less. I'm putting more faith in the 780. I would say that when we actually measure everything, I'm expecting kind of a 75 bushel an acre average. She's cut 34 acres. He's probably cut 65 acres at this point. That's all there is to it. It's not even remotely surprising that the S670 is a less capable machine. A lot less horsepower because it's got that nine liter engine and it's specced with less cleaning area. So there's less rotor space. You know, everything is much smaller. The 780 is a whole nother step up in combine. 13 and a half liter, probably running another 100 to 150 horsepower if I had to guess. Put it simply, the 780 will lap the 670 and one of those big X9 combines, which we do not have because we cannot 
couldn't justify it financially or based on our acreage, would lap a 780 combine. We're closing in on 100 acres cut so far. You're full, Andy. I heard you, but I don't have a truck there unless you want me to go load that 10 speed. We've caught the trucks for the second time today, so we're going to load the overflow. I mean, that is why we brought it to the field and the entire purpose of licensing this truck this year as opposed to leaving it in the shed to help expedite harvest so the combines aren't sitting. Not much left of that bungee strap. Not sure what it's doing. Not much, I can tell you that. It should be a crime to be as comfortable in a tractor as I am right now in this John Deere 8 R370. Air conditioned seats on, massagers running. This isn't work. This feels like play. Sneaking up on Katie and her combine. That's my cue. Let me know if you want to change speeds. I'm running 3-2 right now. It's a 3-5. There comes Jeff back with the semi. Unfortunately, he's not going to get a break because I got two loaded trucks sitting there waiting on him. I'll be here for a couple months, folks. Don't worry, you're not going to miss the concert. Just two or three more passes on this end of the field and we'll go back up there where we started. That was a little wetter at the beginning. Everything's gone off without a hitch so far. Of course, last year it took 30 hours for our combine to completely just craft the bed. So we got another 25 separator hours to see if this brand new 780 makes it longer than the last one did. This is going to be a completely different season though, I can feel it already. Positive vibes only, no breakdowns, 100% efficiency, no major rain delays, no needing tracks for your combine because you got to run out your corn crop, nothing like that. Smooth sailing. I am bringing it to fruition. You see that green spot out there on that field across the lane here that's also ours? Any guesses what that's from? Yours truly in the grain cart, mudding the corn out of that field. I packed that lane down so bad that you're seeing it in this year's soybeans. So it's kind of the fruit of our labors last year. Spoiled fruit maybe, but it is the result of some of the mistakes we made or choices we made. I'm not gonna say it's a mistake because you don't leave 250 bushel corn out in the field. You got a chance to pick it, you gotta pick it. Overall though, there are things that we're seeing this year, especially in our soybeans, because of the harvesting conditions last fall. Most of those are bad things, minor bad things, but you do have to look at them. Got a bit of a traffic jam right here. We'll take the yellow brick road back to load, Chris. Is there much of a line at the elevator, Chris? <laughs> ah, that's what's holding our trucks up. The commercial elevator trucks, so their own trucks at the elevator are transferring grain out of other their truck hub elevators so we're in top line i got a little too much on that one chris take it easy that seems to be a design flaw I'll have to take that up with the engineer did not account for the wind it's a beautiful day to cut soybeans Twenty acres into this 220 acre field first field of the season seems like an appropriately late time my shovel huh well that's a failed design 20 to 30 mile an hour winds don't work with that what i was saying was it seems like an appropriately late time to check make sure we're getting all the beans out because the first 100 acres don't matter right totally so we are seeing a few in here and those are beans that are getting through. They're not shells. Could be header loss. Our family has a tendency to beat the crap out of the beans with the reel. That's quite a few. If we look where the power cast tailboard is not throwing trash out the back, we can kind of see that there are some beans that are being caused by header loss. So I'd say maybe running the reel a tad bit fast. A few beans here and there can add up pretty quickly in terms of monetary value lost by incorrect harvest settings, whether it be on the machine or the header attachment. If you really want to learn a thing or two about combines, Ron from Hartung Family Farms is your man. He moonlights as a combine engineer. Unlike me, who fails to even do minor engineering on my shovel. I think it's the angle I'm parked. Almost missed my call. 
The auger out is like the bat symbol for green card operators. I'll happily come run one of those machines if one of these combine operators feels like they need a break. Gosh, this field's so uneven. Worked a little wet, didn't we? One bean, two bean. That's an acceptable level of loss. A lot better than it looked before. I still don't have a firm number to tell you guys for yield. Based on how busy the combines are keeping me right now in soybeans, I'd say these beans are pretty good. 80 plus. 80 plus bushels an acre if I had to guess at this moment. Back and forth we go. All day and all night. Is anyone getting tired of this view yet? Because I hate to break it to you, we're just getting warmed up. A lot of days of this. My lack of breakfast and lunch is starting to catch up to me. I'm getting hangry. The only thing worse than a hangry cart driver is a hangry combine operator. So we're not in dire straits just yet. But if we get a duo of that going on, combines are hungry and the grain car driver, it could turn into a pretty nasty evening on the radio. Jack. It only took me a few hours and I'm fed up with the radio music. So I went to add my own phone. Saw some interesting devices already added to this. Keep in mind, it is a used tractor. Matthew's iPhone, Brody's iPhone, new Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Galaxy S10. There's one of those on there that stands out to me. Everything is still running seamlessly, except for the fact that Katie just radioed and said she ran a skunk through the combine. Well, I'm not blowing off that combine tonight. You can do that, Katie. <laughs> I'm a jokester. She ran through there. Did it spray you? Uh, no, I haven't seen him. I just smell him. The only downside to commercial elevator storage and sales is exactly what I'm going to tell you. They close at 6 p.m., which is in 10 minutes. So the last load I just sent, which was Chris, is probably going to be the last load we get to the elevator tonight, which means we've got one empty truck coming back, say 900 bushels of beans, and then fill up the grain car one more time for the night, and we're going to be done. We'll have to run a little bit later. It's just not in the cards. That is the one benefit of hauling to your own storage. You work on your own time. Marty just casually scrapes his head against the ground because he's not paying attention. Classic. I would say that we've got a good 30 minutes of cutting left and then we're going to be shut down. If more people were harvesting right now, the elevator would probably stay open to 7 or 8 o'clock. I think we're one of the few farmers running right now. Harvest hasn't really hit full swing across the area. Once all these other farmers get fired up, then they'll kind of extend those hours even farther. It does stink to quit before the sun sets, that's for sure. It is our first day in the field, and it's also my first day running this new 8R tractor and the grain cart. The first thought popping out of my head, by far and away, this 8R 370 is the nicest tractor I've ever ran in the field, and it's not even close. Our comparable model to this is 10 years older, so that's a pretty big leap. Even compared to that brand new S780 or that one-year-old 9620R, this still takes the cake by a mile. Just a very well-designed tractor from an ergonomic standpoint. Operator comfort is top-notch. Transmission is pretty friendly. We're on the E23 speed. It's super smooth operating it, very tactile. The grain cart, I haven't had any issues with it. I've noticed that if I take a tight turn, I do kind of cut a ridge as I go around. Something that I need to keep in mind as an operator. Other than that, though, happy with what we're doing so far. Wish we would have started a week ago. Don't really have much say, though, in how our crops mature. It is a beautiful time of evening, especially to be cutting some beans with some pretty John Deere equipment. He left the empty truck on the south side of the field. He's going to start taking the loaded trucks into the home, taking the elevator in the morning. Pull up in the drive there somewhere. 
you're not gonna be able to ride for too long, but you can ride a little bit. There's only one person in this operation who is more excited about harvest than me. And that's saying a lot because I woke up multiple times last night like a kid on Christmas. And that person happens to be my 20 month old son, Lenny. He's grown to become a very big fan of combines, tractors, and really any large machinery, semi trucks. He gets super ecstatic, extremely excited. So he's here right now. He's gonna hop in and ride for the first time this year. My wife Allie is here with him as well. He's my little farmer in training. Tractor? You say tractor? Got some knuckles. No, no knuckles. Strictly business. Thank you. You ready to go for a ride? You think I'm the one who knows how to get in there? Nice boots. Not gonna give me some knuckles. Okay. No knuckles, only farming. All right, Lenny, we gotta go load this semi truck because we're full. <laughs> Pointing a lot of orders out for a young one. Okay, or a dirty look, that's fine. All right, Lenny, take notes. This is how you load a truck. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> You're so sweet. It'll take you a few years, but maybe one day you can do a truck like that. What do you think, bud? Do you say tractor? Grain cart? Soybeans? is what all the grandkids call my dad. I completely forgot that we sent Chris back to the elevator, so we have one more small truck to fill. Can you say hi to the combines? Hi. Lenny, what are your thoughts on harvest so far? Can you say tractor? Just gotta see our first harvest sunset from the cab. See that? That's right there. Yeah, John Deere. John Deere. It's quitting time. Combines are emptying out. Last through for Dad in the S780. Liar. Marty made me make a fool of myself. He turned back around and went the other direction. He operates on a different set of rules than everyone else here. And there is the last hopper off the S780 for the night. Good day cutting beans. We're gonna go find a nice cozy spot to shut this crane cart off for the night. I just dropped Lenny and Allie off at the car. Marty's unhooking his 780. He's gonna run into the fuel tank tonight. That thing has sure managed to suck down a lot of fuel, just over a couple hundred acres. That being said, we didn't get to finish the field. Based on my math, we're running kind of 75 to 80, roughly speaking, as of right now. If you want a definitive answer on what this field makes over the scales, you gotta check in on the next video. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All of you who've made it this far in the video, I just wanna know, I appreciate you. We will just park this right behind the shed in our bins out in the middle of this field. The S670 is off down yonder over there to the southwest. He didn't quite manage to use as much fuel as the 780, but it also doesn't harvest near as many acres. What a fantastic day to end a phenomenal first day of harvest. It can literally only go downhill from here. Katie's waiting on me. Give me a ride home. See you tomorrow, grain cart. And if you're lucky, I might even bring you a grease gun. Everyone, we've reached the end of a 200 acre day of soybean harvest. It's pretty hard to complain with our progress the first day out of the gate. Everything's running smoothly as I've highlighted throughout the video. We do have 20 acres or so remaining in that field. And looking around the area, I think we have a lot of soybeans that are gonna end up being able to cut, especially after seeing the moisture on these beans. That being said, those are adventures. For another day and i sure hope to see you all in the next video i greatly appreciate all of you tuning in make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and comment down below if you have any questions you know i love to talk about farming have a great day everyone peace